hello, welcome back. And today is uh, what's today? Wednesday, Wednesday, October sixteenth. And this game is still in plat one. <laughs> I've pretty much only been playing one game a week to record for my videos, or maybe a little bit more if I think that the game wasn't good enough to upload. So yeah, I pretty much just got online and then, you know, just played one game. Though I actually did play some double up and I reached Emerald something in double up. I believe my, I don't know what my double up win rate is, but my, my win rate over my past um, 30 matches is like, or my top four rate, I think is 20. <laughs> Six out of thirty no or something. It's very banana. high because I'm I'm still low rank since I haven't been playing that much. But yeah, about the game, uh, we open up here. We have Soraka Seraphine, so I immediately think, oh, maybe I can play mages. So of course I'm going to hold the Soraka, and it is Scuttle Puddle. So usually there is two options. One option is you can make as much gold as possible, and then another option is you can just hold all of the pairs, hold all the units try to make the strongest board possible on 2-1. And personally, I prefer to win <laughs> as much as possible. I don't really like the whole mm, loose streaking too much because if you don't get a good augment for it, then it's just very painful. Though there are times where, you know, if you get no, no good board uh, by 2-1, then oh, yeah. maybe you just have to lose. In this case, though, you can see I, I clearly have a lot of good pairs. I have a lot of options. Hmm, why so tense? Relax. And then here, I really did want to hold the Akali, I think. But I end up selling it because I want to make gold. And it's very expensive to hold Akali in this case. So I just go ahead and yes, sell her. I did have a Titans, <laughs> no one um, but I, I only had the Akali, and I didn't have any other multi-strikers, so I didn't think it was too bad to sell it for gold. And I immediately take Branching out. <laughs> I think Branching out is extremely strong. Of course you can get a not very good emblem, but I think there's so many good emblems <laughs> in the game that it's just, it's not that bad, right? You can usually get something at least semi-useful. And then here I was just thinking, oh, I can just play three mage, right? Level, mm, play a third, play a mage. Um, potentially... Three mage, two vanguard, two sugar craft. If I get Galio, then I'd have three vanguard. Maybe I could switch uh, Blitzkrank for some other unit. And then I didn't really scout much. That's kind of because I think when you have silver augments, it's not too important to scout since silver augments are kind of just whatever. There's not really anything anyone could get that would make me feel like I need to adjust my decision when I'm selecting my own augment. No one expects Even that. if someone else got branching out, for example, it wouldn't change me taking branching out because I don't really care what emblem they get. Um, unless we get the same exact emblem, but this is like such a low chance, right? Two of us get branching out and we get the exact same emblem and we try to play the same thing, it's very unlikely. So I know at this point in the game, I am the only person in the lobby with an Arcana Augment, which means I can play this nice little cozy Arcana comp. Um, it got discovered, I think, a few weeks back, and I didn't have the chance to play it myself, but I do know how to play it. Uh, it's pretty much just five Arcana with maxed out traits, and then you go Tom Kench as your Arcana selection. And then, very, very late game, there is the chance that you can go for... that you can go for... Zerath, Arcana. However, 
You need at least, I think it's 15 charms. You need quite a lot of charms to go for Zareth Arcana. Otherwise, it's not worth it. And then here, I, I do believe I pre-level. I don't actually level, but I pre-level. And I just sell because I want to make 10 gold, of course. And then since I do want to pre-level, I think I sell this Elise. And I didn't mention earlier because I was talking about uh, branching out and such. Um, and we are on Scuttle Puddle branching out, which means, which kind of, I think personally, Scuttle Puddle is good for branching out. Because if you get any, you know, decent emblem, you can level more quickly, which means you get to use that emblem to its full potential more quickly. In this case, Arcana, the faster I get to level 9, I find Zerath and Tom Kench the faster I can cap out my board and have maxed out traits for the Arcana. And then also have 5 Arcana, right? So, Scuttle Puddle, branching out, I think it's very nice. That's also why another reason why I took branching out so quickly. And then I haven't really scouted or positioned too much. That last fight, I could have won. Uh, Twitch was opposite side. If I had scouted a little bit, I could have seen Twitch was there. I could have moved my mages out of the corner so they didn't all get hit. Because Twitch pretty much hit three units with every single one of his ults, which just, you know, killed my chances of winning that fight. So that was just like, um, I won't say a lack of focus, it's more like I just haven't played in a while. And then when I got online, I played a game, right? I didn't, I was completely focused, I was handling a little bit of business as well. So positioning wise, that last fight was a mistake, my, my mistake. I think I could have won that. Here I pre-leveled, um, so I didn't level right directly. But I pre-leveled to level 5, so I could play Vagar, 3 Mage, and then 2 Sugar, 2 Vanguard. And these items are really, really awkward for me. Um, but the issue is I don't want to reforge anything. Because a Guardbreaker is not bad. Last Whisper is not bad. War War it could be Wormog, Gargoyles. Like, there's so many items I could build that are completely fine. However, I don't want to make any of them quite yet. None of them are good yet. Right, uh, Sunfire is, I don't want to make it, it's not very good. I'd rather go red buff with bows, if possible. And then if I, <clears throat> if I go Sunfire, I also lose the chance to go either Bramble Vest or Gargoyles, which is quite sad, I don't want to do that. I could also go Crown Guard even, for Morkana, late game. Uh, the glove needs to be Infinity Edge. Maybe second glove could also be Guard Breaker, Last Whisper. There's just so many items I want to make, and if I come combine any of the things I currently have, it will take away a lot of really good item potential. So I'd rather just not win, or not, I'd rather, I would like to win, of course. Uh, winning is great, but I did already lose the win streak because of my misposition since I didn't scout on the third round. And then on, in addition to that, yeah, I don't know why. Well, I mean, like I said, I was a little bit distracted. I was taking care of some business while playing this game, to be honest. Um, so I didn't play to max potential. Like the third round, I messed up the Twitch positioning. And then I also just haven't scouted like very much. Um, I do think I get a little bit more focused later in the game, but there are uh, mm, some mistakes. I wouldn't say a ton, but there are definitely some mistakes. Because I have such a strong board, right? You see my board is almost completely two-star aside from Vagar, which is very re reasonable two-star Vagar here would be unreasonable <laughs> um absolutely unreasonable so but this is about as strong a board as i could wish for so i definitely should have had a five win streak this was uh, my own fault here i do just buy the jinxes there's pretty much no chance i play it um and i do probably sell it because i think maintaining gold interest is a bit more important than playing a random two-star jinx potentially especially since i can't depend on actually finding the jinx quickly i i could easily not find it ever right i could just have two jinxes on bench and not find it for the next five rounds but if i did get it immediately uh, i think i'd be more inclined to yes, play it that was a banana. <laughs> no one expects the banana here my items are a little bit awkward uh, i'm going to be honest uh, Rod is not great. It could be Crown Guard. It could be Crown Guard. But the thing is, I really want to itemize for Varus before anything else. Varus plus a tank. So, Crown Guard is not the best on Tom Kench. 
Here I reforge and I get a cloak, which is a little bit lucky because it means I can just go gargoyles and I'm very happy with that. And then I was thinking about my items. I was thinking if I could make anything, but I cannot get rid of the gloves because they need to be used for infinity edge and potentially a second crit item for Varus. Which, yeah, it just means I, <laughs> I'm i not really allowed to to combine any items quite yet. I could go Last Whisper, of course, but I think I really don't like Last Whisper on Varys. Well, not that I don't like it. It's completely fine. Um, I just don't think it's the highest damage output. I think just going Evan Shroud is perfectly fine. So I would rather go Evan Shroud if possible. Also, I do, uh, <laughs> I take this charm, lose trade a little bit. Oh, okay, let's talk about that one first. Uh, partial ascension is very slow. I don't think my team is tanky enough. Silver Veil is also not incredible. It's it's completely fine, it's just not the best. And then late game specialists would be interesting, but I think it's a bit too greedy. I'd rather take, and then misconnections is just not takeable. Road Road rejuvenation, also not takeable. Road rejuvenation is more so for when you have a lot of melee carries that can benefit from Omnivamp better. So in this case, I do just take rolling for days because Arcana Emblem is pretty much my combat augment and it's significantly stronger than most other silver augments, no matter what they are. Because an Arcana Emblem pretty much doubles the value of Arcana. Going from four to five Arcana is a massive difference. So, so I'm allowed to take something a bit less aggressive and combative for my second augment. Because if I take Lake Game Specialist, I'm forced to wait and have a useless augment until level 9. When I've only lost one single fight. And interestingly enough, that lost fight was my own fault. <laughs> it was completely my own fault, right? I could have easily have won it had I scouted properly. So, pretty much I'm on an 8 win streak, or 7 win streak if I win this. And... Oh. I do Wait, do I lose this fight? So this is probably just an item diff. For example, if I had Last Whisper, I would have won this. But I'm okay with that. Oh, this is insane. I find two, another Tom Kench. So now I have two Tom Kenches. I'm very happy, right? I already have Tom Kench pair at level 6. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, at this point, though, I'm just thinking. I have rolling for days. I'm saving it until level 8. The best case scenario is I get to level 8, I use some of the rolls, I get Varys 2-star, maybe Tom Kench 2-star, I should get Tom, I already have two of him. Uh, Tom Kench 2-star, Varys 2-star, I get my my board, aside from Zareth and Morgana, I get everything else I need. And then I can save the rest of the rolls and be strong enough to get to level 9, where I use the rest of them. And in this case, late game specialist versus rolling for days means there's an 11 gold difference like technically because late game gives you 33 gold when you hit level 9 rolling for days gives you 22 gold worth of rolls however there's a huge difference in between these two right because late game specialist you have to hit level 9 there's no choice um, it is technically stronger if you get the value out of it but rolling for days just is like a nice split right i can use it at level 8 as much as i need to and then potentially save the rest for level 9 if i don't use it all at level 8 here I was looking at Varys, um, I will say I would prefer a different item. I think Tom Kinch 2 I would take in a heartbeat. 2 star Tom Kinch would be ridiculous. Um, the Varys is gone, so I'm not thinking about that anymore. Now I'm just considering, is it bow? It's never tier, is it bow or cloak? And I believe it is just bow. Because I can go red buff and be happy with it. I wouldn't complain about a red buff in this situation. Also. I'll say that I believe that I believe that um, red buff, i.e., i.e., is probably the best Varus build. Red buff guard breaker, i.e., also very good, or red buff last whisper, i.e. These are all very, very good. I'm I'm super happy with any of these this combination. But I do think red buff and infinity edge are kind of necessary they're personal favorites i also think they have very high win rate statistics so that is what i'm going for and then as for tank items since i do already have one gargoyles i pretty much just want to get another gargoyles which would be 
you know, I think that'd be the best I could get. Double gargoyles plus any third tank item could be fine. War Mogs, Redemption, both would be okay. Those would be the ones I prefer. Could also just be Fimble Winter, for example. I think Fimble Winter is incredible on Tom Kench. And if you're wondering about positioning, um, <laughs> um, since I wasn't fully focused this game, I wasn't like scouting every single round to move positions and such. But I do also think, very generally speaking, if you have a Seraphine, just putting her in the bottom left corner is always best. And if you have a Gargoyles, then positioning your front line the way I am is probably best. Because generally, people tend to put their units in the top right corner, which means Gargoyles gets the most value from being um, the only unit that takes aggro from that top right corner. So in this case, Blitzcrank is the farthest right and forward on my board. So he's always going to get hit by all the range units at the start of the fight, which means he gets a ton of Gargoyles value. So that is why I'm positioned the way I am. Uh, however, I will say I definitely should be scouting because I could probably get slightly better positioning per fight. This is pretty much just like um, a Masters versus GM versus Challenger difference. Like there's not actually a massive difference, but it, it, it can be a massive difference um, in some on some occasions. So if you do things like this consistently, it will boost your win rate and the amount of fights you end up winning. I do go ahead and use the remover, of course. I say this every video, but make sure you use your remover at PvE rounds, because if you have zero removers on your bench, then you get a free remover. If you have more than one remover, of course, you don't have to use them all. Like if you have three removers, it, uh, it's probably not worth wasting them, or it's yes, probably a waste to use them all. <laughs> Here I finally did do a, a bit of scouting to check. I saw this guy branching out, but he had War Emblem. And I did see these Pandora benches, which made me a bit worried. Because Pandora's bench is ridiculously strong on Scuttle Puddle. Uh, if you are winning, it's even more ridiculous. Because you can easily get to level 8, to level 9, and start playing around with Pandora's bench, looking for a 3 star 4 cost. And this is a way people love to win. And a lot of times you can't do anything about it. The best thing you can do is play your strongest game and hope that they don't get the four stars. That's that's it. There's no other choice really, right? And then here, I was looking at my items and I saw I saw I could just go witchcraft emblem. You could save spat in a situation like this, maybe get Tactician's Crown if you're lucky, something like that. But I don't like doing high variance plays if I don't need to. So in this case, there's pretty much no reason to not just go Witchcraft Emblem. Thank you, for um, me. you could argue maybe I could go Gargoyles or something. Witchcraft Emblem currently has no value because I don't have Witchcraft anyway, so I wouldn't get the trade active. And then here, I'm looking at these Augments. I don't like support golem because it messes with my positioning. I think arcana emblem is unnecessary. I'm going to have cap traits regardless. Uh, Blo Blossoming lotus is okay, but I really like immovable object. So I go ahead and take it. And the reason I take it over the other ones, the other four augments I saw, is because I'm going Tom Kench arcana, which means my entire team is going to get nearly 1000 bonus health. Which means if they get a ton of extra armor and MR, it's making the value of that bonus health increase significantly. So here, it's, I'm pretty much just playing around my own board. It's not like I think a movable object is just broken or something. But I think it's very, very ridiculously strong with this specific comp. Also, I felt a little unlucky because I didn't find a single Varus. So I couldn't really put items on anyone quite yet. And then I go ahead and go Redemption. And you might be thinking, oh, like, why wouldn't you wait? This, 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 right? I, I don't think any good player would hold items that long. Um, I would love to go Shojin Zerath, for example. I would love to go Warmogs. Well, not, not particularly, because I have so much bonus health already. Warmogs is actually worse than Redemption, in my opinion. When you have this much bonus health, plus Randwins. Um, so I just think Redemption is very good. It's probably the best item I could get aside from maybe Fimble Winter on Tom Kench. So I have no complaints about just putting that item down. I do not want to greed 
for Shojin on Zareth. I don't think it's necessary to do that. Then here I'm just positioning, trying to fix my, make sure every unit gets randomized on my board, get max value, and then put the red buff, Giant Slayer, and Guardbreaker on Varus, right? Since Rumble has the Fimble Winter, or sorry, the Fimble Winter, the Randuin's bonus health, I just go ahead and give him Arcana, it's a little bit more bonus health. There's no particular reason I chose him. I think I actually would have liked Shen to take it, take those two items as well, just get a little bit more bonus health. Because Shen's ability is quite nice, right? He stuns units. Rumble just supplies anti-heal and does a bit of damage. I think I end up losing this, which is definitely just because of the Varus 1-star. Varus 2-star easily wins this, right? It wouldn't even be close. And we finally make it to Carousel. Unfortunately, I am still last pick, so it's not like I have much choice in what I get here. Um, but I will say... On this carousel, a tank item probably looks the most appealing. Tank item or Thieves Gloves, but Thieves Gloves just got taken. So, most likely a tank item would be the most appealing here. Oh, I take Rod. Interesting. So I think I decided I just wanted to go for a Zareth item immediately. Because I have a glove, which could be three potential useful items. Jeweled Gauntlet, uh, Thieves Gloves, Guard Breaker... Actually, or Steadfast Heart. So maybe four potential good items. I won't say they're all good, though. I think Jeweled Gauntlet is good, and I think Thieves' Clothes is good. However, I really want to itemize my Zerath eventually, so I'm going ahead and building for him, especially since I can make the Jeweled Gauntlet immediately. And I'm not super picky on the tank item I get for my Tom Kench. It could be pretty much anything. Also, you might be wondering why I've just frontlined my Bard. <laughs> Um, to be honest, I don't think Bard does much. His damage is pretty low, and I don't want him... I want him to get Randuin's value and tank a little bit more, but I don't want him to put my backline in jeopardy. And if you put units in the third row, there's a chance that when your tanks die on the side, for example, the left side tank dies, they can walk into your backline through that unit that's sitting in the third row. And that's something I don't want. So, I don't really value Bard enough to put him in the back line in this case. Oh my god, this looks ridiculous. This guy has three Aegises and a... Or a guy? A guy? Aegises? Three a guy? I don't, I'm not sure. Three Aegises and a Randuins. It's kind of ridiculous. Here I do go ahead and take Judgment as a charm. Because it's free and it makes it so I can get to level 9 very, very confidently. I could explain stage damage. I think I'd rather do this uh, separately, because it would take a minute. But basically, the base damage goes up per stage, and you take one extra damage per unit that is alive if you lose the fight, right? So if you take a one unit loss, you take one extra damage from that unit that lived on the enemy team. If you take a two unit loss, that means they, you, know, you lose and they have two units alive, then you take two extra damage. And the way the stage damage works, is it starts at stage 2 and increases, you know, stage 3, stage 4, stage 5. It goes 2, 5, 8, 10, 12, 17, in, uh, instant kill. And that would be stage 8. Stage 8 is an instant kill. I've never seen stage 8. Uh, I've only played for, well, this is my second set, so for two sets. But yeah, I've never seen stage 8, so I've never seen an instant kill that way. Here I do go ahead and use the remover because I believe I'm probably going to put them on Zareth now. I thought maybe Ari would be better because I didn't have a mana item for Zareth. And then here I get a nice cloak, so I'm thinking Gargoyles would be lovely. Uh, Adaptive Helm for Zareth could be okay. Evan Shroud could be very good. There's quite a few items that could work here. Dragon Claw would be okay as well, it's fine. I do get the Gargoyles. I'm never going on Spark there. I think Adaptive Helm could be okay, but I'd rather have the third tank item for Zara or not for Zara for uh, Tom Kinch. And then we're simply waiting because I don't have any rush to get to level nine. If anything, I think having 51 health at this point is very healthy. I can take 
since it's stage 5, like I said with the base damage, the base damage is now 10. So any loss I take 10 to, you know, 19 damage potentially, if I took a 9 unit loss, which is extremely unlikely. Um, but basically base damage is 10, so you can assume I always take minimum 11 if I lose, which means I could lose pretty much most of the stage and still be alive. If I lost 4 fights I'd probably still be alive. So I'd rather sacrifice a bit more health for a bit more gold, because that means I get to get to level 9, more likely, with enough gold to find Zerath and Morgana. I see this guy has Varus too, this guy has a Varus, and another guy has a Varus as well, right? I think there was 4 or 5 Varuses out of the pool there, so I decide I should level now, and I should use my rolls, because I really need to find Varus Morgana before other people take them, especially Varus. Um, Varus 1 star is pretty detrimental to my fight, like my combat power. I have a 1 star Zerath, a 1 star Varus, they're my main damage dealers, and I don't have magic pen, I don't have armor pen, and they're both 1 star. So my combat power right now is really, really just like minimized. So my priority here is finding Varus 2 and Zerath 2 if possible. I do think the Morgana was a big deal as well though. She gave me Preserver and Witchcraft traits. As you can see here, I took another loss because of Varus 1 star. I think I lost to the same person earlier because my Varus was 1 star. So I lost him twice. And here I do take the moon. And I assume it's obvious why, but I will explain anyways. Um, I only need one more Varus. I, I got the moon before I found the Varus, right? But I only need one more 4 cost, or one more unit that isn't 5 cost, right? And that is Varus. And even though he is very important, getting the extra 4% chance to see legendaries permanently means I have a lot higher chance to find Zareth and Morgana 2 star. And that is a way I can kind of cap my combat power much higher. So buying the moon there feels like it's not too greedy, I think it's fine. Because there's three fights left this stage, even if I lose them all, I would have to take pretty much four unit losses every single time to actually die. Because I have enough health to tank three losses this stage. Also, if you noticed uh, earlier, I did mention Pandora's Bench as an issue. So I believe I will start scouting very soon to make sure no one is trying to three star any four costs. However, because of the state of my gold being so bad, it's kind of difficult for me to stop them regardless. Then here I'm scouting Varus, plus I'm scouting people's Pandora's benches, and I see how many Varuses are out of the pool. Here I already have anti-heal. I don't particularly want guard breaker for a one star Zareth with no mana gen, and then Warmogs is pretty overkill in my opinion. I have so much bonus health on my entire team. It's 990 bonus health per unit. Warmogs is cool, but it's just unnecessary. I need more damage, right? So I think Evan Shroud is by far the best choice because I'm the closest to hitting Varus 2 star and I don't have armor pen. So this gives me the highest damage boost by far. Plus I think armor and MR is a lot better than health when you have something like, you know, 5 Arcana, 1000 health on everyone. And then here we go, fighting the same Twitch player who beat us earlier. It's funny because I still haven't switched corners, right? I haven't really moved. And it's a little bit of me being lazy, a little bit of me not being hyper-focused. When I'm super focused on the game, I will scout and I'll reposition aggressively because that, you know, maxes out your chances of winning. However, this wasn't even close, as you can see. This was not close at all, this fight. And I do think I knew I was quite strong, so I also wasn't too bothered about moving for particular players. I see this guy's three Varuses. Next one has one, two right on bench, so that's five. And this guy's rolling three costs or four costs, looking for Rakan. And this guy has a bunch of Rises as well. And then I see he sells, I think he sells Varus, right? They, so there's two people with two star Varus, which means there's eight Varuses miss, missing out of the pool. There's only two left. So I do roll and find a champ dupe. 
which is, uh, you know, incredible. I also get super lucky. I find two Morganas in the next shop together. Otherwise, I would have... Well, pretty much I was rolling to find... See if I could get lucky and find that Varus. And then keep the champ dupe for a 5 cost. But what ended up happening was I found Morgana immediately. Hit 0 gold. And then I just had a champ dupe plus Varus pair. So I immediately just dupe Varus. Because winning the next few fights is the most important thing. And then here I do find a Zareth pair. So that you can see the moon augment or charm I took earlier is doing a lot, right? It helped me find 2 star Morgana. It helped me find another Zareth here. And then here I do do the... I mentioned this earlier, right? I said I would have rather had the rumble, the two support items on Shen. Because they do give a little bit of bonus health. So I put Randuin's on Shen. This way he'll live longer. And then I put Arcana Emblem on Morgana. And that's... Or do I do that? I think I do, right? I do it because I needed one item for Zareth and one item for Morgana. But that means she's still going to have an empty item slot. Also, I'm scouting Pandora's bench player again. Uh, unfortunately, he already hit, right? So I couldn't do anything about that. And then here I just roll a little bit because if I can find Zera 2 without champ duping, it's, you know, very nice. I can save it. Uh, these items, only adaptive, unmistakable. I don't need bruiser items. I don't need IE. I don't need Nasher's Tooth. This... This might have been a mistake. I think in hindsight, I would have liked to sta take Static Shiv. Um, blue buff and Death Blade are really unnecessary. You could say, oh, maybe remove her red buff, move it to Bard, go Death Blade, Varus. It's so convoluted, though. I think I'd rather just have, you know, three items for my main units, which are currently Morgana, Zareth, and Varus. So pretty much... I think it's always just a Morgana item, no matter what. And then Adaptive Helm completes Varus, so I think the first one was always Adaptive Helm. However, I think Static Shiv was a lot better than Warmox. Uh, that was definitely a mistake. And then here, I really want the tower, so I do end up selling Shen and just playing a Taric. This way, I don't lose both of the traits. Uh, I do lose Pyro, of course, but it means I get the tower, which is... I feel like it's more impactful, like personally. I obviously like it's hard to tell. But the tower was very, very strong at one point. So I noticed I say I say very, very a lot, don't I? <laughs> but the tower was incredibly strong at one point. You can see it kinda just does random lightning strikes of damage. It, it's not bad, right? At the, in the end, though, I, I don't know if it was better than selling Shen, or selling Shen was worth it. But at the end of the day, I I had no chance of winning this fight. You can see that his Rakan took negligible damage. He pretty much healed through everything with Spirit Visage. I just don't have the magic pen right, which, you know, if I had Static Shift, maybe. But without Static Shift, there's no chance. And so here I'm just rolling for charm. I sell the bard, replace him with one star bard, try to find a charm. I still don't find anything. This charm doesn't do anything, right? Yeah, seeing a full a full shop of four costs wouldn't do anything here. He hit Gwen three, he just hit Fiora three. I try to reposition to maybe do something, but there's just no chance, right? He has three three star four costs with four artifacts. And that is what Scuttlepuddle plus Pandora's Bench plus win streaking can do for you. So yeah, that's the game. I end up surrendering and it's GG. But yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And if you liked the video, please leave a like. Okay, love you guys. See you next time and bye bye.